freed up so that we could partner with public and private and faith-based organizations for young people and poor people so that we could do we could do better with that. Thank you very much. I have some written questions, but anytime you're ready to stand up and uh, ask a question, please feel free to. First question I have. We see your ads on TV saving the county millions of dollars. Could you explain and give some examples? Would anybody like to respond? Sure. Yeah. Um, something I've said before, but I'll just re-say it in the context of this question. We've saved over $700,000 since year one. We sold off 200 county cars, less gas, less, less cars, less maintenance. People we've sold off, or we got rid of half the cell phones. We have created an energy consortium. That doesn't cost any money. It just allows us to buy energy in bulk. The county has saved over a million dollars in electric and gas expenses by creating this consortium and buying in bulk. And we invite municipalities who may not already be in a consortium, and they say so far to date somewhere between four and five hundred thousand dollars in their own uh, individual municipalities by buying in bulk with us. We have shared services with any municipality that will talk to us, which will allow everybody to save money. We have continued, as I said before about the jobs, but that's not saving money except if you don't have a job. That's a really big deal, and, and if you put money back in your pocket by doing that, that's a great deal. The kinds of things that I've been talking about and doing the last three and a half years have saved uh, county taxpayers or the county portion of your tax bill billions of dollars, and we will continue to do that in the future. So all of you that got your tax bill this year and looked at the county line, you saw no difference between 2013 and 2014. For the first time in over 25 years, there was no tax increase for urban county residents under the Democratic and bipartisan freeholder board. If the county executive, they would have spent, or there would have been an additional $7 million in that budget. In the last four years, the county executive has increased the budget by $29 million in spending. She's also cut 50% from veterans benefits, as well as from Workforce Investment Board and senior, senior Services. When she was the county clerk, her budget went up over 50%. It's, it's budgeting. It's about priorities. The budget that we put forward this year restored the cuts that the county executive talks about in her first year. She didn't, she had a balanced budget. She balanced it on the back of the students of Burke Community College, where she cut five million dollars and tuition went up 25% while cutting a million dollars from the technical schools, from the special services schools. The freeholder board has put that back in, and at the end of the school year from 14 to 15, all of those funds will be restored. I have a uh, written question for Kathleen Donovan. You say there are more disadvantages to merging the county police with the Bergen County Sheriff's Office. What are those disadvantages? Me, uh, there's a number of disadvantages. I'm for mergers of uh, like agencies. So if police departments want to merge, I think that's a home run. We've got 69 chiefs of police, 74 superintendents of schools of Burton County, and we I think we can do with fewer of them as good as they are. That's one way to save money and, and return your tax dollars to your pocket. Specifically with it's a merger, it's a reconciliation, depending on what it is today. I, I read something that Freehold Gans said, uh, nobody's going to uh, change. In our last debate, uh, my opponent said, Hanukkah's going to be gone. Whatever there is in their imagination, here's my problem with it. You don't, the sheriff by definition, no matter who it is, 
The sheriff is an elected official. You never put an elected official in charge of a police department. That's a recipe for disaster. In a period of 13 years here in Burn County, we had seven sheriffs. That's too many uh, people in and out of office to run a, a police department. The, unfortunately, now our county police department with their new contract, which I fought for as long as I could, are giving them 5% minimum raises over the course of four years. They are now the highest paid county sheriff's department in the United States of America. We can't have it. We, it's, it's on the backs of the taxpayers. The county police have renegotiated their, their contract twice and we're saving, saving $6 million over the course of their four-year contract. When, when you look at those kinds of budget numbers, it's, it's impossible to do. But you never put a politician in charge of a police department. And what the sheriff's department does is very different from what a police department does. And all those folks over there who are sheriff's officers are going to disagree with me. But they truly do two different kinds of things. And you can't combine them. And you won't save any money. And you will create an enormous problem. Thank you. I sure do. Um, first, the plan over 20 to 25 years will save $200 million. The other thing is we'll have one outstanding police force. We will be able to have better lines of communication. We'll have better coordination with local municipalities. And we won't have Donovan's Army. Um, We need to we need we need to look at we need to look at the realignment. No one loses their job. No one. Not one person loses their job. They move over as a standalone organization underneath the sheriff. And when the county executive says that it shouldn't be an elected official, the county executive is the elected official. Guess who the police chief reports to? The county executive. So when she says no that it shouldn't be an elected official, she is an elected official. Because today, the director of law public safety is the same person that's the chief of police. And that person reports to the county executive. And the county executive is elected. Under the realignment, the sheriff is a constitutional officer. We have to have the sheriff. We don't have to have the county police. By law, we have to have a sheriff's department. So what we're proposing is a realignment to bring the county police under the sheriff. No one loses their job. Their contract stays intact. And at the end of the day, we have an outstanding law enforcement agency, two good law enforcement agencies, one not better than the other, but one doing the work for the people of Bergen County under one organization saving $200 million over 20 to 25 years. I think that is outstanding. Now, this question is directed to both candidates. How do both of you feel about expanding the freeholder pool? We used to have nine member freeholder board, and then when we had the Charter Study Commission, which was an elected and appointed board on whether we should change the form of government to county executive, it was a board elected. I happened to be elected to that panel and served on it. And as a panel, we decided to reduce the number of freeholders from nine to seven, and we decided not to make them by district because we had assembly districts. We have um, congressional districts and we have towns in our county. And the feeling at that time was you don't want to balkanize Bergen County and do too many things. You have one freeholder and then you have one, three state legislators and then you have a, a, a congressperson who's in charge. The feeling was it's too many um, different areas and we're all one county. Senate may have changed it and people voted for that. That's what people were trying to say yes to. That may change. My feeling personally is it's whatever you want. If people in the county have a ballot question and they decide they want to have freeholders by district, that's okay. It's 
whatever the people of Bergen County decide. Thank you. <laughs> All right, the next question that's written is, if you, um, that's all right. That's all right. Um, I'm certainly open to uh, any idea that expands representation on the free open board. However, and whatever that looks like, I, I, I'm in favor of looking at equal representation and have representation that reflects Bergen County, um, both geographically and demographically. Either, either or both. We also need to explore um, options that truly represent all of the people of Bergen County. And if that means that it's a vote, then, that, then it's done by vote. But also we need to look at meeting and talking to people in the different communities about what's happening. Just because you don't have a freeholder from your town or your city doesn't mean that you don't have representation. Coming out and talking to the, to the community, calling the freeholder board, speaking with them about your concerns and the things that you that are that are troubling you, you have representation there. So I urge you to do that. I urge you to call. I urge you to ask this question, just like you're doing tonight, to get the facts and get the truth. Because then you can take that back to your friends and neighbors and tell them that. But at the end of the day, it's about equal and fair representation, and I support that. Thank you. Thanks. The next written question is, if you are successful with shared services, how much can we expect to see property taxes decrease? And this was actually directed to Kathleen Donovan. I can cut your property taxes by a third. One third. So if you're paying $12,000 a year in property taxes, Paying eight thousand dollars, you have four thousand dollars more in your pocket. It's a question of sharing services, eliminate some of the enormous overhead that we have in people. And, and I'm not talking about people losing their jobs or doing through attrition, but we just spend too much money, too many taxpayer dollars get spent, and I can cut your property taxes by a third. Thank you. 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 Th